Welcome to the Taco Cast. I'm Crystal. I'm Will. And you're our audience. And thank you for joining us today. You can see that we've rearranged a little bit again. Hopefully you like it. I'm still vexing Will with my, uh, yeah. Sorry. So, our topic for today. Uh, we're going to be brief. Uh, everybody's got a bunch of stuff on their mind. Um, but uh, the election, 2020, for the U.S. Okay. Will, do you want to lead us in? Um, I was screwed either way. <laughs> a lot of people feel that way. I, you know, it normally, you know, when it comes to you know a presidential election or an off-year election for governors and you know and so on or school board, I always feel like I'm having to pick between the lesser of the two evils. And this time around, I didn't want either one to be the president. But I had to vote for one or them or write in Mickey Mouse again. You can always write in me. Well, see, I went with Mickey Mouse. Because, not really. But I might as well write in Mickey Mouse. Yeah, a lot of people were unhappy with the, uh, the election this year. Um, even people who voted for Biden. Um, he wasn't their first choice. But he wasn't even in my top ten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you didn't get your socialist uh, uh, presidential pick, uh, so... You know, I, I I don't know, like, you keep calling me a socialist, but I think that, you know, I, I think uh, universal health care is something that should transcend political uh, political ideologies. I feel like everybody should be on board with, you know, taking care of their citizens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for, is there a question in there? Yeah, well, no, it's just, uh, as far as socialism go, oh. I think that's probably one of the only things I, uh, one of the only political ideologies I have that could be considered socialist. And like I said, I think. Well, you want to take from the rich and give to the poor. Uh, no, I don't actually. No, mm -mm. that's how you did. No. Well, how are you going to pay for all your socialist programs? Well, there's a variety of ways that funding can be done for programs, regardless of. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't know there was more than one way possible to pay for things. Yeah, well, there's a lot of ways to get the funding. Um. One of those ways is closing loopholes that people of means traditionally use to get out of paying taxes. So you say taking from the rich, and I'm talking more like, let's stop buying uh, a Crayola scratch across a canvas and then having our buddy appraise it as $2 million so we can turn around and donate it to a museum and use that as a write-off. I don't like your words. <laughs> Art is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, well, some art beholds it sucks. Wow. You're saying this to me. I'm saying this to you, an artist, that some art sucks. Wow. <laughs> okay. You have bad words. I'm sorry I bad. have bad words. Bad, bad words, Crystal. I mean, okay, so you know I've been interested in alpacas for a long time. Yep. They spit. They only if you make them mad. Don't make them mad. They won't spit on you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyways, uh, not everywhere, because lots of people have alpacas, but there are areas where the alpaca industry is really just rich people selling each other alpacas so that they can get write-offs. Oh, so, presidential election. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that uh, the presidential election was rigged? No. Thank you for elaborating. Oh, you're welcome. So, we're done. Have oh, a great day. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, there have been several. There's a lot of people out there who feel that the presidential election was rigged, and I will get into those in a minute. There but are. I wanted to get your side first. And there's a large group of them that are here. Um, and one of the main things that I saw was uh, when the, get the nominee for governor in our state didn't win, and he insists uh, that the election was rigged. And uh, a lot of uh, his supporters insist that it's rigged, too. They're like, I voted for you. I can't believe you didn't win. I didn't vote for him. A 
lot of the people I know didn't vote for him. Um, and they're like, and, and when confronted with the fact that a large number of people are like, hey, my vote was counted and I didn't vote for him, you know, he sucks, they, they got really upset, right? Then they turn on those people. They're like, no, 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 no. And these people, by the way, have been fucking nasty this whole election cycle. Um, and, you know, I've, I've documented a, a fair amount of that, uh, accusing victims of child rape of ruining their rapist's uh, life. Uh, who cares if she ruined his life? Fucking deserve to have it ruined. Um, but obviously I'm a little bit passionate about that, so we'll, we'll scale that back. But now they're just super upset. That people are, why are you saying you didn't vote for him? Well, why are you assuming everybody did? The saddest part about that is a day-old piece of half-eaten lasagna could have beaten the incumbent because a lot of people were that unhappy with the incumbent and his handling of the coronavirus crisis. But the guy that they put up against him was so bad. He wasn't even as good as a half-eaten piece of lasagna. Well, I th it has to do with a lot of... The incumbent... You know, um, people were upset with him over the handling of the coronavirus. As they should have been. But they also, if they looked at it, they should have been more upset with the handling of the economy and passing of new taxes in, within our state that really, you know, is the main issue. And when it comes to, when it comes to any governor in any state, I don't care what political party you belong to, I mean, you could be, you know, a three-legged alien for all I care. I mean, this is new ground. Is that a euphemism for penis? Uh, no. Okay. Um, but you, you, you could be an alien. I don't care. I mean, who had experience at handling a pandemic before? Well, those people are gone. Because that was 100 years ago. <laughs> so we don't have any experience, you know, or people in office who you know, were around during, you know, the Spanish flu pandemic. Well, not necessarily. I would argue, um, and a lot of my friends who work in healthcare are of the same opinion, that uh, the people who were around when AIDS first came on the scene probably could have counted. But it's, it's different, though. You can't catch AIDS from, you know, being this close to somebody. And that's true. And that's true. And so the pandemic response is going to be different. And as I'm sure we all know, the pandemic response to the AIDS crisis was a fucking abysmal. failure. It was, it, was, it was abysmal, yeah. Yeah, they really, they really dropped the ball on that so much. Mm -hmm. And I think, honestly, that we went too far the opposite direction. Which happens in society a lot. You know, we overreact to the opposite direction than we should. Yeah, we're like Instead oh, we... level heads sitting back and saying, "All right, let's look at this entire thing." Mm -hmm. And and people polarize really, really easily. I, even I do, and I'm aware of the phenomenon. I, I'm aware that it happens. I'm aware of the triggers that make it happen in people. And even I will find, you know, uh, I'm two or three hours into something, and I was like, oh, shit, that wasn't the logical way to behave in this situation. So it, it even happens to people who know better. Well, the polarization, you know, speaking of that, a lot of that also had to do with the, you know, the governor uh, race as well. People were very polarized over the shutdown. And, yes, we both agree completely. That the shutdown, you know, in our state was mishandled in a lot of ways. Unnecessary, but could have handled a lot better. Yeah, I mean, people well, lost their jobs. Economic uncertainty uh, is jobs, terrifying. Jobs, homes, businesses, everything that we know. Mm -hmm. We know people who are directly affected by this entire thing in a an extreme harshness, you know, because they had a small business and they've been shut down since March. Yeah. And they're not going to survive. No. And it's it didn't have to be that way. No. But at the same time, though, you know, because of uh, the, the wheeling and dealing and power of big business, big business made damn sure that they were open. Yes. And that their, you know, you know stockholders and shareholders were taken care of. Well, and they're, they have the resources to weather the storm, too. A small yeah. business doesn't have the resources. No. It's... Um, there's there's so many um, instances where laws are in place to protect consumers as they should be. They're 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 good, you know, like uh, the laws for landlords, right? You can't kick somebody out if they're like, hey, you need to fix my broken shit. You can't just be like, well, get out, right? You got to fix it. It and yet consumers abuse those laws. 
large businesses that own large numbers of rentals, they can weather those income losses while they're fighting those things in court. Uh, an individual person who maybe only has one or two rental properties, that will destroy them. Yeah. So how do we as a society find a balance between doing what we need to do to protect everyone, but, you know, we're protecting consumers, which we should do, but we also protect the small businesses. Big business can handle themselves. Well, back to the governor's race, though. Mm -hmm. That same thing. You know, we shut down the entire you know, economy and schools and everything else for public safety and then told people to wear a mask, um, sanitize things in between, you know, uses, you know, if somebody else is going to share them. Mm -hmm. And then we had a mixed message that was sent out to the population from those in charge who could have handled the uh, response and the information out there in a much better way. But they didn't. They chose to go with their political ideology, which helped their their you know their backers, their supporters, you know, and instead, and yeah, some of it was based on the fact that we didn't know everything in the beginning of the pandemic outbreak. We you know there were people who were sounding the the alarm well before March, and nobody wanted to listen to them. Well, coming into no, March because. Politicians who were in the know were making money off that. Right. And while they were making money off it, everybody else was suffering. Mm -hmm. And people are still suffering to this day. So back to the presidential election. <laughs> As we digress. Yet well, again. well we, we've covered the, I think we've covered the governor mm -hmm. race. And, you know, so back to the president. How is the president elected? Well, the president, do I vote for the president? We all vote for the president. But does my count, my vote count as much as yours? It all depends. Oh, how, so why does it depend? It depends on where you live. Okay. And it depends on uh, it depends on your state's particular rules. So our state here is a winner take all state. So right. if the presidential election, if the majority of people vote for red or blue, all of the electoral votes go for red or blue. Not all states are like that. Some states split it. If 60% of their votes are for this candidate and 40 are for that candidate, then 60% of their electoral votes will be for this candidate. Hmm. But electoral college doesn't have to vote the way the voters tell them to. They don't? No. Why not? Um, I, believe, what are they there for? I, I, I don't believe all of them can get away with that. I'm not 100% versed in electoral college, but uh, I know that some of them are allowed to vote however they fucking feel. So why are they there if they're not going to vote the way that the population votes? Well, that's a really good question. Hmm. Um, now, regardless of the reason why it started, which, um, if I'm remembering correctly, was to help protect states. Uh, and, and So a long-ass fucking time ago, it was really, really hard to get everybody together to do a thing. What? So, yeah, I know, right? Huh. Yeah. Um, back Is that before, like, back when they wrote like the Constitution? Yeah, and back when like cars weren't a thing. Oh, and really? You Did they have just cars? Pull up your cell phone. I thought you could pull up call. in your Jeep and you yeah. know, people just came up to you right. and got in. You yeah. Take it somewhere. Oh, so, okay. um, yeah, and when it, it would take you a month to, to get to your buddy's house. So, what they would do is they would, the Electoral College was established because people in smaller areas would get together. We want this dude. You go tell them we want this dude. And that person would be like, hey, they want this dude. And that's how that worked. Because that was the best way to do it at that time. We're no longer in a state where we have to have that happen. The, the electoral call the the original votes for presidency. They used to do it at fairs. Mm -hmm. You could get absolutely sloshed and vote for you know the president or the person of your choice. If it makes you feel better, you can absolutely slosh and vote for president now too. It's just you yeah. have to do that at home. Yeah, right. You can't do it in person. Well, in, in our state, you can't vote any way except for in by mail or Dropbox. They have special drop boxes that are just for um, that are secured. They're they're more secure than the big blue mailboxes you may see on your street corner. Yeah, we've been doing vote by mail for years here. Well, eleven years. Mail mail only or Dropbox only in our state, and yet the fraud rate is zero. Point zero three percent. I was going to say it's like super low. Yeah. 
yeah, but uh, you know who who accounts for that? Oh, in, in case anybody's wondering, who actually accounts and audits all that? The information can be simply found online, and when it comes to mail-in and absentee ballots, or in states like ours where it's mail-in only, there is a humongous amount of oversight on it. So, mm -hmm. and I personally have had and been have received a letter in the mail that said that my my vote was not counted because the signature had changed. Yep, and they give you an opportunity to rectify that. And then your then your vote counts. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of oversight for voting. And there are consistently studies looking to see whether or not there's fraud involved with voting. There's uh, there are studies and there's research and there's investigations into the electronic voting, into the mail in voting. Um, and someone will there's always going to be somebody who's convinced that their candidate was the best thing since sliced bread, and oh my God, nobody voted for them, so it must be fraud. It could be fraud, but it's not. Well, statistically, it's very small. Mm -hmm. and it's a much easier to influence an election through mass media than it is to pay or to get people to fraudulently fill out ballots for you know, any particular candidate or... Uh, ballot you know, issue, you know, that may be out there. And I mean, it's, would you rather spend the rest of your life in prison or, you know, and be bankrupt over, you know, um, uh, you know, something as stupid as trying, you know, filling out someone else's ballots for them? Or would you rather spend a couple hundred bucks on it and put a Facebook ad out there and influence the election or the referendum that you have out there in, in person? Because mm -hmm. you can actually really do it, and it came damn close in this state because of um, something that was completely made up. And we had a, an issue on the ballot for um, teaching safe sex and sexual um, education in schools. And the party that got the, the ballot on the books to be voted on was, they made up a lot of it. And it was it wasn't based on the actual curriculum and outline. They made everything well, not everything. They took some things just completely out of context. But a lot of it, though, they made up yep. because it it stoked the fires, you know, behind it all, and got people really in, like, what's going on here? You can't teach sex ed to my five year old. And a lot of people fell for it. They really <laughs> thought they did that it was true. And that was much more effective than grabbing somebody's ballot and yeah. filling it in wrong, was putting out these deliberate mistruths. Um, and anybody who had read through it, I read through it. Uh, I think actually one of my nieces read through it because she was absolutely incensed. And she's like, Auntie, is this right? And I was like, well, it's it's not. And she's like, I'm going to read it. And she read through it. And she's like, no, this is completely wrong. I was like, yeah, that's... Yeah. Um, well, within the first page, I think it is, is where the first discrepancy of the misinformation campaign was right there because they insisted that there was no opt out. And I think it was the first page, it was the first or second page. But like right there, it's like parents can opt out, which they've been able to do the whole time. It mm -hmm. wasn't a change, but they, it was very successful in convincing people that this was true. Um, and part of the thing was, I, I don't know. Schools everywhere did it when I was in school. I, I, I don't know if it was nationwide or what, but it was basically like, hey, no one can touch you in the areas your bathing suit covers when you're like in first grade, right? It's literally that same exact thing. It's like, hey, we should probably tell kids that no one should be touching them where their bathing suit covers. Um, we should start doing that again. Yeah. Sorry. 100%. Uh, I, I'm down for that. Well, yeah, yeah they, they spread a lot of lies to, you know, to convince people and the same thing happened in the presidential election too there were a lot of things that were said on both sides of the line and where people that they stretched the truth they made up falsehoods and they did it to make people to make the other person they were running against the enemy and that's the that's the society where we live at today is you must be my enemy if I'm running against you and a lot of those things now some of the candidates encouraged that behavior, but the majority of it didn't even come from them. No. No, it came from uh, political action groups. Right, but to which they support and, you know, loosely. Yeah. I mean, they're paid by the political party that, the, you know, each individual is running from. And I don't think it's entirely fair 
to expect a candidate to call that out every time it happens because it happens so frequently. Like, it, it's not fair to say, hey, Mr. Trump, what about X, Y, Z? They said this. And, you know, for him to be like, oh, yeah, that's that's fucking bullshit. Don't do that. Well, then why do we have special you know, action committees, you know, that are allowed to do that? If the, if they're if the candidate themselves are not responsible for the message that is being put out there, the lies, the falsehoods, you know, um, of everything, they sh if then why do we have one, them? If it was only one or two, I would say yeah, definitely. If it was only one or two, I would one hundred percent be behind. Hey, you, you fucking tell these guys to knock it off, you know. Well, and, and it's if they super don't, easy to make one too. But there's so many. There's such a huge proliferation of them. When confronted individually, yeah. Definitely. If someone's like, hey, how about this huge thing that's on the news? What do you have to say about that? Okay, yeah, that's bullshit. We can expect that, but we can't expect every single one to get called out. And how do we fight it then? I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. I mean, it's just, but the, the presidential election that is over with... Um, now, the Electoral College hasn't even voted yet. No. How do we know who the winner is going to be if, we, if the Electoral College, the people who are supposed to be voting, we vote for the elector, electors, and they then vote for the president, and that's, that, that's mm -hmm. who actually um, pick, is, becomes the president. How do we know that Biden, in this case, won and not Trump? Well, if, we don't, actually. Uh, well, the news and everybody else mm -hmm. is saying that he won. It, because... Because he won the enough electoral college votes, but they haven't voted win. yet. They haven't voted yet, and so they could all they roll in, and they could all vote for Trump. Yeah, yeah. So how do we know that he won? So typically, what they do is uh, they're tallying the votes, and some states don't start tallying until the poll polls close. I know, right? Frankly, I think that's a bad idea, but it's their state. I'm gonna let them do it. Some states, like ours, start call start tallying as votes come in. Mm -hmm. why fucking wait? Let's just get this done. Um, and some are like a mix. They're like, okay, we're going to start calling on uh, this thing, you know, or whatever. So they're not all the same, and that's why some states are, we're still waiting for Nevada to shit or get off the pod. And I love the memes, though. I do. I do love all the memes. So, anyways. Um, so typically what's happening is while they're tallying the votes, if they get to a point where the number of votes that they've tallied where that person, where one of those people will definitively be the winner regardless of the rest of the votes, then they'll say, this person. So, so they're pretty so yeah, it, like, or, you know. Basically, yeah, if they've got 75% of the votes in and 60% of them so far have been for one candidate, even if the other 25% are for the other candidate, it's not going to matter then. So they'll say, yeah, for him. right? But your vote still counts. Yeah, yeah, your vote still counts. Everybody's vote counts. Everybody's vote counts. Everybody's vote doesn't count the same, but everybody's, everybody's vote counts. Mm. Some states have more electoral vo uh, votes than others. Well, because they have higher populations. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I do believe so the, the minimum of, is like, every state gets two. Yeah, and it's based off of, uh, I want to say it's based off like the number of representatives they have in both houses of Congress. I don't know. I, I've only had one. This is my first cup of coffee, so... You should have another one. I Because you're close. I will need there. it to function. <laughs> now, the, the, every state gets two electoral college votes. And it's a minimum. And then the rest of the among, number of electors that each state gets is based on the population of the state. See, that's all I know. Yeah. Mm. But, all right. Um, but how do we, we, we... So we don't know. When do the, the electoral... Um, actual vote. So I believe that they're supposed to be ratified by the 20th of of November. Oh, November. Yeah. But then we got a couple we got a week. We got 12 12 days. Hmm. So they they could come back and, and all the electorates could vote for Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Well, if it's really close, a lot of places will do a recount. In fact, um I believe some of those states were like within sing like within percentage points, like 0.2% of each other's where they're at. And so some states will automatically recount those votes to make sure that they've been tallied correctly. Doesn't uh, Trump want to stop the vote in certain count in those votes in some one states and there are several states, and then? Um, 
Yes, and I'm not entirely sure why. Oh. Well, I know, it, I think it was Pennsylvania. Even though he had a representative for the, their party um, there watching the counting of the votes, he said they weren't gave, given um, ex, um, some kind of um, access to how the, both the, um, the ballots were being moved around in the, in the facility. He wanted them to have special access to where they uh, all of them were stored and how they're counted and how they came in and how they were processed. When the representative of each party was already there, mm -hmm. so it doesn't. You know, I'm not a well, you know, obviously a legal scholar or an attorney, but it doesn't stand ground. It, it's like, no. what, what do you want to do? You want like what two people there? You, you know, when it's been one person from each political party, a representative has been at, you know at the where they're counting the votes. Yeah. And it's not just one location. Every location where the ballots are counted, they have to have one representative from each party there to oversee it. They don't just, you know, yeah. secretly like say, Well, tomorrow we're gonna move it to that warehouse over there and the next time the election comes, we're gonna do it in the back of the, you know, Dairy Queen. And for a lot of those places, it's not just that. They also have representatives of the press watching the, oh, the yeah, process. The process yep. is under video. Most poll, uh, most vote counting facilities are. I'm pretty sure you can't even fart without having somebody, you know, getting it on film. Yeah, they they, they count them at you know tables like this. Mm -hmm. They sit around and count the votes. I I, I read through the entire thing, you know, on uh, how you know, absentee ballots are are counted and tabulated and stored. They don't get oh, to get yeah. they don't get to get rid of them right away. Address that. The watermark thing also was not, states print their own ballots, so if you're concerned about ballot irregularities, you should get a hold of your state, because the federal government does not have anything to do with that. For watermarks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, the election is pretty much over with. Mm -hmm. um, when are we going to go back to some kind of stability? Never. Oh. Well, that sucks. Yeah. Because I'm tired of this. No. I'm tired um, of watching people, you know, fight with, you know, people they have no idea who they are or, you know, um, marginalizing others because they think that they are, their candidate was, you know, better than everybody else. Uh, no, I honestly don't think that we're going to I think we should, just, we should bring back dueling I, and just let these people duel it out in the park. That is a fucking amazing idea. I am 100% behind that. Yeah, I mean, because I hate to break sport. the bad news to a lot of people out there, but um, some of these, uh, you know, proud boys, you know, they may, they can scream behind a keyboard, but there isn't a chance in hell they would ever stand up to a duel in a park. <laughs> you are so not wrong. Oh, my gosh. I Sorry, but it's true. Uh, I, you know, there are a lot of keyboard warriors out there who think that they are the biggest, baddest individual until they're actually confronted or anybody asks them to explain their side and, you know, their views on anything. And then they cower and walk away. So, you know, and, and it's not because I'm against Trump or I'm trying to bash Trump or any Republican Party. I don't give a shit who you voted for or who you support. I hate politics. So go on. We need to take a moment to fantasize about New Zealand. I'm not moving to New Zealand. My wife wants to move to New Zealand because you can throw dicks at politicians. It happened. Look it up. Dildo Baggins. Google it. And by dicks, I mean rubber plastic things that represent male genitalia of a human being. Not, you know, actual, like, cow dicks or, you know, whale penises. This conversation took a weird turn. Well, you, just, you gotta clarify, because the, the internet is a big big place out there. Yeah, so basically what happened in New Zealand, there was a New Zealand politician that was giving a speech, and somebody threw a sex toy at him and, and hit him with it. Um, and she didn't die. They She wasn't shot. Yeah, they, yeah, they really? arrested her. But New Zealand, you're not... I, it's very hard to have um, any kind of a weapon in New Zealand, handgun or rifle. But they do have them, and they hunting have, is legal. For hunting purposes only, mm -hmm. and uh, they're very limited, and they don't have a Second Amendment like we do here. And you are only two hours from the beach wherever in New Zealand you're at. Isn't that cool? That's why I don't want to move to New Zealand. Honey, what's the chances this giant tsunami is going to take out New Zealand? It's very slim. 
So? No, seriously, <coughs> though, I, all joking aside, I, I would love for us to get to a place where we can have the kind of political race that they had there, where the, the losing, <laughs> the leader me. of the losing political party called the winner of their election and said, hey, it was a great race. This just proves that we need to do better for the people of New Zealand. I hope you have a great term and I'll see you next time. Holy shit, that was amazing, gracious. It showed that it was about the people of the country and not the party, not the individual. How awesome is that? I would love to get to a place where that's what our politicians are like. Where when they're having a debate and one guy says his thing, where the other one will be like, you know what? She's got a great idea. You know? How hard would that be? It'd be really fucking hard because this is what our politics is all about. Did you know that when it comes to the presidential election, there is nothing in the Constitution or in law anywhere that says the losing party must concede after it has been proven that they lost. It's just what and, gentlemen do. <laughs> right? It, it is. It's, it's been but a we don't have any of those. A gesture to concede once you've lost the election. But in this PC society that we live in now, and this you know, winner-take-all, you know, the other one is my enemy, we, they don't even have to do Aren't that. Aren't those two concepts kind of incongruous? Yeah, you'd think. Okay. But you know, they don't, there's nothing in, in the Constitution or in law that says that they, you know, the losing side must concede. Nor, uh, also, uh, during a debate or to even have a debate. There's nothing in the Constitution that says no, that they think... must debate or that they ha you know, have to have a certain number. It's always been agreed upon that they would have a gentleman's, you know, like, okay, we will do three. Because you can win one, I could probably win one, and the other one can be a draw. Well, I think the debates are kind of, or at least, I, it's kind of more for the people, honestly, because it, it gives us an opportunity to ask questions about policies and to find out what they have to say. Debating kind of a... Maybe that's the problem. Maybe the problem is that we call them debates, and so we're assuming that people have to be on two opposite sides of an issue, or we could just call them fucking discussions. Let's talk about an issue. Why can't we have a... When it comes to you know, political debates, why can't we have the two candidates, or her 10, 15 candidates, whatever you know, there is, and whatever step it is, why can't we have both of them up there, and then have two moderators, one that each of them picks? You ask a question, I ask a question. I ask a question to you and to you, and then the other one goes and says, and asks a question to you and you. Okay. Why, can't, why can't there be, you know, you know, like a, in this presidential election, you know, Trump and you know um, Biden up there, and then have two moderators who one that each of them picks and says, "I'll ask questions to to you," instead of them both agreeing upon a neutral person. Who they their political party is then going to immediately while it's going on, you know can you know say that they they're not being fair to eviscerate them. Yeah. yeah I mean you picked this person you agreed to this person why are you now attacking them saying that they're not being fair to you or to your party or to your platform why can't you just say you know what I mean didn't like the way I looked you know I came out in that because what well, that would be too much of that easy thing to do, wouldn't it? To admit that when you're wrong. Mm. You know, and when you screw up or when you have policies that people don't necessarily agree with. Yeah. I uh, shit, that would be fucking great, wouldn't it? You know what? In that debate I looked awful. Uh I've rethought my position or whatever or you know, let me clarify, I came off very wrong or like whatever isn't just uh, what they do now. Yeah. Uh, and I'm happy that, that the presidential election is over for the mass, for the most part. I mean, I'm sure that there, you know, and from what I understand, there are going to be several um, legal um, uh, things that are bringing up here. Maybe before, one of the states before, already dismissed it. Right, but they, I mean, they're, they're probably going to be more, mm -hmm. and people are going to now start screaming at the top of their lungs to anybody who will hear that there has been so much fraud that dead people have voted, which you got to look that up. That is absolutely hilarious. And anybody who believes that dead people have voted, they're, they have, especially like in Florida, where they believe that dead people voted for the president, if the names of the individuals who actually voted and their actual votes 
counted, and they were real, and they weren't dead. They just happened to match people who were dead with the same stupid name. Well, and there's also, uh, I believe a couple years, or a couple elections ago, uh, there was something similar, and uh, they had found a case of a dead guy voting, and I guess what had actually happened was the gentleman had cast his ballot, and then died, like, in an awful car that, that, accident. That happens. Yeah, I mean... I mean, because, you know, in several states, you can vote early. Yeah. You know, and he, he may have cast his vote, and then, you know, in the next preceding two months or whatever, leading up to the election, he dies in a car accident. doesn't mean his vote doesn't count, or he was a dead person who voted, or, you know... That, they want to make it out to sound like there's somebody else who filled it out for him. That's kind of a good question, though. In places that allow early voting, if you die before you voted... Should your vote count? When I was in the service, I voted when I was in the service. I was overseas. And my did my vote not count because it came in after Election Day? Even though I had to, by law, cast my vote while, you know, during the, the time on Election Day, there overseas. Why does my vote not count? I'm serving my country. Why didn't it count? Well, of course it counts. But... And it, but it didn't come in the day of the election. It got counted later on. But they knew how many votes were coming in yeah. from you know from military services over overseas. So I don't know. There's the politics sucks. I hate politics. And the, the, these years when we have you know presidential elections or major issues on the ballot, I all, all I see is people who would want to be keyboard warriors and. They want to inject themselves into the into the narrative of it, even when they don't even have the information that they need, and then they think I'm big bad ass mother. You know, uh, I know more than you. You're what you're less than me because I know more, and that's not the only way we should ever treat other people in society. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the world we live in right now. No, I How do we change it though? Well, I don't know. I think one of the first things to do is, though, I think it's going to be really, really hard this time around. Because let's be fair, people have spent the last four years in politics either saying or hearing, fuck your feelings, snowflake. Yeah. Four years worth of that. These people over here... Now they're realizing, oh shit, that was a fucking awful thing for us to say slash do to people. Doesn't feel so good to be on the other side of it. And these people over here are going to be like, yeah, now how's it fucking feel, motherfucker? So, while I can understand that these people very well may be having a change of heart, hey, that was fucking awful of us. We shouldn't have done that. Let's do better. It's going to be really hard to convince these people over here who spent four years hearing that. Be like, oh, wait. Why do you, why do I have to be better, but you didn't? That's what we're going to have to overcome. And around and around and over and over again. Goes. And it's a cycle that doesn't end. No. Yeah. So where does it end? It, well, I don't know. I don't know how you actually would end it. Well, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe if I grew up in a different time and I was given different, you know, standards and, you know, than what is out there today. I mean, it. I didn't get any participation trophies when I was a child, and I was I was taught, you know, as as a child to respect my elders, and to respect was earned, not given. Mm -hmm. And but yet at the same time, you started off with a certain level of respect for those who are older, who knew, who lived through life, instead of casting them aside because they're old. You know, or older, because of now I would be in that that group, and I hear it all the time on on my you know my channel are from they, people. Are they you, calling you a boomer? Uh, no, they don't call me boomer, but they, they make they. You, how can you possibly know this? Because you're you're older. Because I'm I obviously I don't fit in with the twenty you know you know young group the twenties and the thirty Maybe year olds. The, the young and spry. That's right. I don't know. I'm 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 old and creaky and you know and gray, but. You know, I, they don't have that society. It, it to me doesn't seem like they have the same standards as as a large. And I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to make a generality, 
because I know there are, there are certain uh, groups and there are certain um, parents who have done damn good. I mean, our daughter is one of them. She's in the 20 something, you know, AM group and she's very respectful and she w is open minded. And there are people out there like that who, who are open minded and respectful and have different standards. But the, I guess the population and the, and the, the image that's being put out there is of people with, they don't have the same standards that we, that we grew up with. I don't know that they don't have the same standards. I just think that they've got, I think they have different limits. I, when I was growing up, there was a lot of stuff that got pushed under the rug because of, of civility. No, nobody was willing to rock the boat. You know, don't say anything, blah, 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 blah. And uh, I think a lot of people younger than me have seen that, and they're like, mm, absolutely not. We're not going to let that happen. Um, and so they've kind of gone the opposite direction, right? There's, there's an immediate call out for the smallest fucking thing. But I've also noticed, especially with the even younger generations, that it seems like they're they're coming into their own, um, and they're they. It's really difficult to describe. Uh, I'm gonna need again way more coffee before I can be articulate about it. Um, so it, when you were in your twenties. It, and let's just hypothetically say that TikTok was around when you were in your 20s. How long would you have lived um, and, been able, and done any of the shit that they have on TikTok as a, as a female? Oh, yeah, and stop you right there. I don't know that I would necessarily be the appropriate example for that because I have never done what was common for the people in my demographic at any right, time. Right, but so, it, it, hypothetically, I mean, yeah. your mother would have killed you if you would have done anything you know, on TikTok when you were in your 20s, if there was around them. I mean, it... This is, th this is just a larger example of basic human behavior. People want acceptance from their peer group. And it used to be that your peer group was literally just a couple of people around you. But with the advent of social media, your peer group is fucking huge. And people are going to do stupid shit to get the approval of their peer group. And, and that's just human nature. It's just that we live in a time where our technology has changed how that's going to manifest. And it's easy for people to take advantage of, like the thing with Momo, like the thing with some of those challenges, you know. People, and it's typically older people, honestly, it's usually somebody in our demographic who's like, hey, let's fuck with kids, and they put out something to see what kind of dumbasses are going to do it. And I call them dumbasses, but to be fair, most of the time, they're just kids being kids. Yeah, but they're, you know, you know the, the actual physiology, you know, and, and brain development. They, they are dumbasses because well, they have, their brains haven't developed yet. Uh, you know what? That's true. That is true. Impulse behavior control. <laughs> the areas of the brain that control decision making aren't fully developed. Um until your last major growth spurt, which is right around the early 20s. Um, it, and now granted, you've got another one before that, so when you're entering your later teens, you know, you do have pretty good decision making. Um, and if you've got parents who helped guide you through that, you know, and those processes, it's going to be stronger. Moral standards. Not everybody has that. And you're still really impulsive because your decision making areas of your brain are still underdeveloped. Couple that with the fact that social media does produce serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin when you use it, and you've got a recipe for kids who, you know, probably wouldn't have been doing those things, but they're going to. But we have the drug there for them to use at any time. I mean, I've seen, you know, kids as 12, 13 years old on TikTok and, you know, and doing all these stupid challenges and, you know, and doing a lot of really crazy stuff that you know, that should only be for you know adults and even adults shouldn't be doing. So back to the presidential <laughs> election. Um, coming back to that. And TikTok now, challenges. Like, presidential where do election. you where do you see the next four years uh, going? Do you see anything widely changing over the next four years? Let's say if Biden is um, uh, the 
elected president. Because, again, it's not official, um, even though he's you know, done his congratulation, you know, speech and everything else already. But um, where do you see the next four years? You know, from the presidential side. Uh, uh, it, it, all, it all depends, honestly. Um, Biden was not the first choice of the majority of the people um, in the, the, the majority of people who identify as liberal with Democrats. He wasn't their first choice. Um, which is one of the things I've talked about before. One of the major failings of the DNC is that they consistently give the middle finger to their base. And one of the reasons why I was opposed to people voting for Biden in the first place is because by continuing to vote for the people they pick, you're continuing to enable that shitty behavior. They've already shown you that they don't give a crap what you think, and they're just like, yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll take this offering anyways. Fuck them. So, but <laughs> ah, that being how do you said, really feel, Kristen? well, <laughs> uh, you know how I feel about the two party system. I think it's well past time we set it on fire and put it in the trash, um, because it doesn't allow for change. You've got two. I parties. think we should have no political parties at all. Everybody should be, you know, we well, should vote on people based upon their their policies and yeah. what you know. I don't think we need a Republican, a Democrat, the, Independent, Green Party, Communist Party. The idea party. of a party is kind of that it's supposed to coalesce some core ideas so that you should be able to tell. It, it's so fluid now uh, between the parties, you know. It, also you know, true. <laughs> you know, I, I used to What think, is a Democrat? What is a Republican? I mean, because the, the, what it was their core value, you know, family values. I mean, there are people who run for, underneath the Republican Party who, you know, are child molesters. And you know, and they have other. How is that a you know a family value? That obviously, if you're the Republican Party and you are supporting the, someone who's you know been a convicted child molester, the, how no is shit, it even possible? There was a guy actually running for office who admitted to being a, a child molester and released a manifesto on how to groom children for sexual yeah. abuse. And the guy, he got votes. I'm like, I just hope these are people who didn't get their voters pamphlet. Please, please be people who did not get your voters pamphlet. That's, but at the that's same time, you know, what was the Democrat and their values, you know, uh, and their core values as a Democrat, we're not there. It's fluid now. It is. You know, and, and it has they're, been for a while. They, they, they may sway more towards the Republican Party than or independent than they are a Democrat. I mean, and it's, it's a label that we, we place to be upon people. Of the two-party system, we need to break the control that the GOP and the DNC have on our political process, because there's a lot of people in both houses who don't really match them, who would probably be really great politicians on their own, other than the fact that all politicians suck, um, would probably be really great politicians on their own if they were allowed the freedom to have a party that more closely met their values as a politician. And knew that they didn't have to be in one group or the other to get votes. But as it is now, there's so much um, party loyalty, which is, again, bullshit. There's, but there's so much of it that you basically have to say you're one or the other to get votes. So um, the scare tactics that are used in the presidential election, um, I'm just going to shoot a couple of them past you. And you know, get your feedback on. Do you think Biden's coming for my guns? No. Do you think Biden's going to tax us to the point where we're poor? No. Do you think that Biden is going to uh, somehow in the next four years expand um, medical coverage for everyone, and it and he's going to do it as um, a, in a way that is going to tax businesses so they leave the country? No, and no. Uh, Biden is, that was one of the issues with me that I had with Biden, uh, is that he's not been a supporter of universal health care. All right, so um, you don't know where the next four years are coming from. It all and depends your, your on Your crystal whether, ball apparently is broken. It um, depends. It could go either to either people are going to hold the DNC responsible and they're going to make them do what they want them to do. Or, and who, who's making them do that? Oh, is that the financial backers? And the special interest groups mm -hmm. who are out there who are paying for them to be in office. They always get their wish list. I'll give you X amount of dollars, but I need you to do this for me. You know, get rid of the EPA. 
or get us out of the World Health Organization. Stupid. But you know, they they got their their wish. They bought their their you know what they wanted you know to see happen, and then it trickles down to us. Thank you, Ronald Reagan, in your voodoo economics. Oh my God. <laughs> trickle down freaking economies but i mean it, i don't know what the next four years is going to bring you don't know what the next four years is going to bring or eight years or 12 or 16. i mean we know we're not going to have the same president 16 years from now or 12 years from now but we you know um no i hate politics <laughs> let's go well in that case babe let's go ahead and end the video and next video we'll talk about animal crossing and flower breeding what i'm kidding we're not going to do that oh i was like what is that all right well so i guess we can we can go ahead and end the this this thing now and you can get back to your other um oh yeah i had know. a zoom meeting going on while we were filming this <laughs> it's uh the, the camera's right there by the way oh I don't know why you're looking up there. I was like, what are you doing? I, <laughs> uh, you kept on looking up that way. There's I was cameras looking up, all like, over this place. I'm like, yeah, I know there, there is, but we're only using this camera for our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Anyways, uh, they, they knew that uh, we were filming, so I was just like, I'm just going to put you guys on mute. So, Thank you for joining us today. Um, make sure that, you know, as, as you watch this, if you have any questions at all about the, the political... Um, president or if you have a comment or something you would like to tell us about uh, you think that we may have gotten wrong in this video I mean, because I have quite a few people um, have an opinion out there that would love to tell me you know just how much of a you know a basher of Trump I am which I'm not again I cannot stress this enough is I don't care who you vote for or what political party you want to draw your affiliation to they want us to fight with each other so we say divided because it's a lot easier to get everything that they want done. If we are sitting here fighting each other, they can. No one's watching what they're doing. So I don't hate either either candidate, you know. And I didn't want either one of them, you know, to be president. But that's just my vote, my vote, my view. So, vote will. But thank you again for joining us. Um, you know, I really appreciate everybody being here. Don't forget to like, comment share um and check out our uh you know link in the description for um our fan gear and anything else that you'd like to add in closing any words of wisdom from the crystal today it'll get better will it it will okay well thank you very optimistic am i looking at the right camera right now yes you are okay awesome. you're finally looking at the right camera. <laughs>